Hello, so in this small uh, breakdown video, I just wanted to share uh, some quick tips and uh, go through the process of how I ended up making a render into an AR ready uh, filter. So over here um, is a render that I ma had made a couple months back. This is uh, Arushi. Now, this scene has a lot of you know high high density geometries and the textures are also really highly you know high high resolution textures. So it was a challenge for me to kind of uh, you know optimize textures and UV maps and uh, the geometry for AR applications. So over here I'll just dive into Spark AR, which is what I use to make filters for Instagram and Facebook. Um, right away I think you can notice a change in hue, uh, but that's completely fine on mobile. It looks a bit more bluish. This is something that I, I had I had to deal in Spark AR viewport. Uh, but anyhow, I just wanted to show a 360 view of uh, the whole thing and uh, works perfectly fine on the phone without any you know lagginess or anything like that now i just wanted to zoom into the garment especially over here and just show you the you know the the the, the texture resolution that i had maintained or at least try to maintain and uh, uh, it's it's pretty good uh, there is a good texture fidelity uh, one thing to consider is uh, spark air only allows you to import 1k resolution texture so it was a bit of a i had to hack a bit and figure out a way to import high resolution textures into Spark. This theoretically is around, I think, 5K, uh, 5K res of textures uh, just for the garment alone. I'll show how I actually did that. Um, so anyhow, let me just go into Houdini first of all and uh, show you basically the entire scene setup of what I did for making this AR ready. And let me just actually start off with the um, the lady model over here. Now this is a model that I had found online uh, from Daz. Uh, if you had worked with Daz before, you know that um, the models there, uh, the 3D models there are pretty high high resolution and um, not really air ready. This alone, for example, is uh, 62,000 primitives over here, if you see in the bottom. Uh, so I had to figure out a way uh, to optimize the geometry, but also keep parts of the geometry high dense and uh, other parts of the geometry really uh, low res. So I had baked out this, uh, this is an ambient occlusion map, um, which I baked out from Cinema 4D. So if I just highlight the sari garment over here, so you can clearly see what it does. So basically the black parts are um, the parts where it's occluded by the sari, uh, the garment. And the white parts here are basically where the parts which is uh, exposed to light. Or in my case, I want, it, I wanted it to separate between parts where the viewer can see and the parts where the viewer can't see. So these black parts are you know, hidden and not visible to the uh, viewer. So what I wanted to do with that is um, optimize them more um, instead of equally, you know, uniformly optimizing the whole mesh. So what I did with that is I plugged it into it into a poly reduce node over here. And uh, if I just uh, get rid of those colors, you can see that uh, you know the parts where which were black, for example, the legs, the legs, um, they were uh, really more uh, reduced, poly reduced, than parts such as uh, the face over here or let's say the hands and the fingers, because I wanted to preserve that uh, detail. And uh, yeah, so the way I did this is basically plugging plugging my uh, baked uh, texture from Cinema 4D. Is ba it's basically an ambient occlusion map that I baked. I plugged it, in it into an attribute from map and uh, that basically assigns the color values from the texture into the points on the geometry. And I used that in the poly reduce here and uh, there's a retain density by attribute uh, function that you can enable. And you can just, oh, I think, yeah, it's recalculating some stuff now. So I just plugged that uh, color data, which is CD, uh, for that stands for color, and uh, you can control the threshold with this weight slider over here. Uh, so I, I think I can uh, maybe quickly show how it looks like with and without the um, you know retain density attribute uh, turned on and off. So this is without. Oh, let me actually also. Oh, I'm having a bit of a trouble here, but okay. Okay. So this is uh, without any, uh, you know, this is still optimized geometry, but uh, this is without any uh, masking. And this is with a mask, okay? So the, over here, you can see the primitives are, the, the poly count is basically the same. It doesn't change, it's still 8,614. 
Over here, it's 8,612, just two polygons less. But you can see uh, more of the density for the, I mean, the topology is more over here, where I masked uh, rather, you know, compared to the uniformly poly reduced version. So that helps a lot, especially the face, I think can clearly make out the face in the masked version. So anyway, that's one uh, trick that I used. And uh, let me see what other tricks I used. Uh, yeah, for the uh, UV uh, unwrap part. So this is, if you have worked with uh, DAS models before, you know that uh, uh, their UV maps would look something like, actually let me set the UV viewport here. So it would look something like this, uh, you know, it's pretty normal. It's, um, if you, if I had applied a uniform, I mean a checkerboard pattern over here, let me just uh, UV quick shade. So if I apply a checkerboard pattern, you can see that it's uniformly, uh, you know, distributed all around. And that's good generally. But in this case, I also wanted to apply that same mentality of, you know, um, uh, separating parts from uh, from the I mean separating parts into the ones that the user can see and the ones that is hidden from the user so I had basically used the same um, ambient occlusion mask and this time I had uh, separated um, it into the geometry into two groups so one group is uh, going to be the group where it's only black which means it's completely occluded by the sari garment and the other part is uh, basically the parts where the viewer can see so with these two, uh, with this model being separated into two parts, I could uh, later import this into Cinema 4D and uh, um, scale the UV uh, islands. So let me just show that uh, over here in Cinema 4 So this is Cinema 4D now. And let me just go ahead and quickly show. Uh, yeah, so that's that. Okay, there is some fire. Uh, okay, I'll just hide that as well. Okay, so this is the... Uh, basically the optimized version of the female model. So if I just go into the UV editor here and um, you can see that uh, parts, uh, you know, these parts were separated into a couple of uh, regions. Actually, let me not, uh, I have a better one. I think it's somewhere probably here. Yeah, I think this one, I'm not sure. Let me, okay. Let me just move these. These are two models. So one's, uh, uh, not optimized and one is optimized. So let me just go ahead and apply a, yeah, a UV texture. Okay, I think this one. Okay, so on the left you can see this is the original DAS model and on the right is the one with the optimized UVs. So the whole point of optimizing the UVs in this case is to maximize, maximize the texture space available to us. So in this case, I wanted to give as much uh, information, texture information and uh, details to the face, the hands, you know, the belly region here, where whichever the region that the user can see and give less uh, texture information uh, to the parts where the user can't see and which is occluded by the sari garment. So example, the legs here, the chest, uh, the backs. So, and also this part of the head because uh, it's being occluded by the hair. So you can see the... Uh, yeah, so over here you can see, you know, compared to the original, uh, compared to the original, this is the original UV map on the left, and compare that with the uh, optimized UV map. So you can see the hands, the face, how big they are in the UV space compared to, you know, the hands and the face in the old original default uh, UV map. So that's another trick that I used uh, to basically maximize the texture uh, space. Um, Okay, another, uh, let me see if I have something else. Okay, now let's uh, move on to the sari garment over here. Now for this, I haven't uh, done much optimization uh, in in Houdini, but I had done a couple uh, UV optimizations in Cinema 4D, I'll show that. So uh, let me actually show the UV optimization first. I think that's more uh, uh, important. So let me just go ahead and uh, grab the sari Okay, so this is the sari garment now, and uh, this is how the UV map, oh, okay, this is not the UV map. Let me actually show this one instead. So this is the sari. Uh, this, uh, I had manually, you know, split the UV garment, I mean, the garments into multiple uh, pieces, such as, uh, you know, this is one piece of the garment. This is the second piece, this is the third, fourth, and the fifth. So I had manually kind of um, uh, split these models 
uh initially they came like this let me just go ahead and grab that and move it to the side okay this is not the same model but it's just basically the optimized version of the same uh but i just wanted to show the uv part of this so you can see in the original sari this was the uv map uh this was an original this was originally an 8k image and uh Obviously, I can't import an 8K image into Spark. So the way around it was I had to split this uh, garment into multiple pieces. The one on the left that you see here, let me actually just um, to differentiate. On the right, the lime color is uh, the default original sari. And on the left, the white ones um, are basically the sari that is optimized in, in terms of UVs. So I had to split that into multiple UVs and according to me, theoretically, this comes to around 5K worth of uh, texture uh, resolution. So with that out of the way, uh, and it's pretty easy. All I had to do was uh, just select uh, polygons and uh, just drag them away. And I had to just kind of, you know, figure out, uh, this was more of a, you know, playing around, seeing what fits where and basically making the most out of the UV space that I have here, the 1K resolution UV space that I have. And in Houdini, basically what I just did is, um, I just used a poly reduce here just to, you know, reduce the poly count, nothing much, uh, nothing fancy going here. Uh, yeah, apart from that, uh, let me go ahead and move on to the wings. Now the wings um, weren't a focus to me, uh, so I, but I still did a couple of optimizations here, especially, with the geometric and the poly count. Now I used the same trick that uh, we used for, uh, you know, this one, for the female uh, <coughs> model. So in the female model, I had ba baked an ambient occlusion map, but uh, I also did something similar here, but instead I um, used a color node and uh, selected parts of the geometry where I want, uh, you know, maximum uh, poly count. So I just basically, you know, used this, uh, selection tool and uh, kind of selected areas where I want uh, to color and mask. And I fed that into a poly reduce here again as a color attribute. And with that, you can see clearly on the flat areas or where, you know, on the black areas, uh, there is less topology and poly count compared to the areas, you know, around the edges and uh, yeah, the edges basically. So that it gives more of a you know smooth silhouette uh, around the edges. Um, so, and one last thing that I want to show is, uh, the hair part, uh, the hair was, okay, this is bugged out. I'm not okay. The hair was, uh, a bit tricky to do. Uh, it was not the most, uh, there are better ways to do this, such as, uh, you know, recreating, uh, hair cards, uh, with spline and extruding them, but, uh, I wanted something quick and dirty. Uh, okay. So the original hair was something like this and it's uh, over here you can see it's 760,000 polygons uh, that's a lot and uh, the final result came to around I think 6,000 polygons so what I basically did is I just converted it into a volume and converted it, it back into a polygonal mesh so I just used a bunch of VDB um, you know VDB and uh, VDB convert nodes <clears throat> so I think I can show yeah so this is how it looks like in VDB mode. And then once I converted that into polygons, it looks something like this. I remeshed that, I poly reduced it, and um, that's pretty much it. You can see here. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much, actually it came out to 4,000 polygons, which is uh, still not good. I'd say it would it would have been better if, you, if, uh, if I used hair cards, but uh, that's more, uh, I'd not uh, complicated, I'd say, but more time consuming. This is uh, this is very straightforward and uh, quick. So after that, I just uh, used the UV layout node to basically um, generate some procedural, uh, you know, UV UVs, and I just exported that. Um, baking hair texture, I mean, baking, um, you know, baking this onto this was uh, a bit of a challenge. Uh, I don't think I can go through that uh, process in this video. Maybe I can make a video in the future how on how to bake, um, bake more complicated things. I had done a baking tutorial how to bake realistic uh, textures onto models before. So that's pretty much it. And uh, yeah, I didn't go through much of the process of how I baked, uh, you know, these onto 
you know the garments and stuff like that i'll do that in a separate video maybe because it's more technical i just wanted to show how i actually optimized um, you know the uvs the geometry and the textures uh, but i hope you learn something new today and uh, if if you have any doubts or comments you can leave them down in the comment section below and i'll answer them anyways that's all for uh, this video and uh, take care bye